Hello and welcome to week 37 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk further about ARR, Application Request Routing. And also this has been 13 weeks we've been focusing on web farms and we talked at first about DFS for keeping this content in sync and now we're focusing on ARR. And so I want to talk further about ARR and this is a particular trick used for using ARR on the same server as we would the web role. And it can also be used with multiple servers as well. So I guess the question comes, why would we want to have ARR on the same server as the web servers? And there's a few reasons to do so. Uh, let's start and picture a multi-server situation first. We can see in this diagram here we have three servers, ARR Web 01, 02, and 03. And notice that the ARR role is taking that incoming, the first request, and then it needs to hand it back off to the web role. And in some cases, we actually may get the request into any one of the three nodes, and actually coming up next, one of the next two weeks, I'll be talking about how to load balance ARR itself. But the request comes in, and then we may send it back out again to be distributed to one of these web roles. And so you can see how the ARR role is completely independent of the web role, but yet we may want not want to do this with six servers. We may say, let's use three servers to do this instead. And now I would initially recommend, if you can, set up two ARR servers on the front end and don't try to collapse these together. What I'm going to be showing you today is more difficult to troubleshoot if there are issues. It's a little bit more work. But if you're in a situation where you want to save a couple servers, you don't want to have a couple extra servers there on the front end, then this is a solution that I think will work really well for you. I have set this up in multiple environments and it does work. And in fact, what I'm going to show you today is a couple ways to do this. Now, other situations where you may do it is even in a single server situation like this one here, possibly on the web role, you have a different type of request. And so you want to proxy through. There's a reason you want to proxy through. Or you want to leverage ARR for something different. And in one of the upcoming weeks, actually, I want to talk about this more in what I call site instances, where you can actually have multiple websites and you can switch back and forth immediately with no downtime and you can have a staging, a QA, various different sets of sites. And so there's a situation there where you may use ARR even on a single server. So I want to show you two tricks or two different ways you can use to manipulate the headers to make this useful in your environment. And so the first way I want to do it is very, very similar to what we talked about last week. And then I want to show you another way which is slightly different again with another trick that you can hopefully use in different situations. So what I want to do is a request come into ARR base, which is our first touch point. We want our second touch point, which is URL rewrite, to catch that request. And it's going to send it to Contosa.com server farm, which is going to send it out and back again to the Contosa.com site, which is going to process it normally. Okay, so we only want that request to be caught the first time through. Something's going to change with the header, so it recognizes the second time through. So the IP on this server is 10.240.522. I'll just drop that on my clipboard. And that's going to be where the original and the secondary request is going to come into that same IP. We can reuse that IP as many times as we want. And of course, this is very valuable if you have multiple sites. Uh, with a single site, you don't really care too much. You will the more IPs that you need to manage. So first, let's look at our bindings. And we're going to go to ARR base, which is where our first request comes in. And this is looking good for us already. We have HTTP, port 80, and all IPs. So we're going to leave that alone. And Contoso now, we're going to add a new binding and then I'll delete the old ones because we don't want them anymore. And we're going to leave it as generic as possible except let's make the host name Contoso. And notice it's not .com or www. It's exactly Contoso, kind of made up domain that we're going to leverage. And so we're going to take that and let's remove all these other ones. Okay, so we're just left with the one here, Contoso. So we'll save that. So now our bindings are good. Now we have two more things to do. The next is URL rewrite. And we'll go here to a new rule. Let's delete the one we had previously. We're going to start fresh. And with a blank rule, and let's call this VIP Contoso. And the pattern is going to be everything. The condition can be whatever you do, whether it's by IP or host header. We're going to just do it by HTTP host is going to equal to exactly contosa.com or and actually let's make this optional uh, dub 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 optional dub 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 there and if 
it comes in as this, we're going to do stuff with it. So here's what we're going to do, and this again what I covered last week. We're going to take that HTTP host, the domain name, and let's tuck it off to the side. So we're going to say HTTP, how about we'll call it, we can call it what we want, we just need to be consistent, and original HTTP host. And we're going to make that what HTTP host was. So that means that now this HTTP, original HTTP host, is going to be contoso.com whatever the domain name is that we come in on. Now that we've saved that off to the side, we're going to make our HTTP host to be exactly Contoso. And so now we're changing that on the way through. Then we're going to route this to Contoso.com server farm. And that's a done deal. Now let's go to the server farm. And I have the IPs here from before. We're going to start fresh here as well. And we're going to add the IP that I added to the clipboard. So this is the local IP of the server and we're going to loop back here. Now notice you can have multiple servers if you have more than one. If you have three let's say you would add your three servers here and it would come back again to any of the three servers. So the first request comes in, comes to here and goes all the way out of the three servers and back into let's say a round robin, any of the three. Okay so now that's done and let's turn off the health test that we have. It would probably get in our way and confirm we are available and healthy. So let's give this a try and then we need to go and write that HTTP host back again. So request builder contoso.com and we can see here actually let's just clear out what I had. Okay so we'll go here to contoso.com and we get a 200 status code welcome to contoso. Beautiful because we know the original binding was on ARR base so we know that this has worked all the way through. So that's how we would be able to do this first trick, the first way to do it. Except that what we still have to do is, for the developer's sake, let's say the developers are saying if the domain name is www or not, or a different domain name or .org, anything like that, we want to be able to have that HTTP host available for the programmer. So let's put it back again. And we want to do this, let's say, at the site level. It is possible to do it, and that's kind of what the second trick will show. But let's do it at the site level. And we're going to create a blank rule, and let's call this put put HTTP host back. And so the pattern would be anything. Now we only want to do this if HTTP host is already available off to the side. So we're going to say if HTTP X original HTTP host is not exactly blank. So we see the hat dollar sign which means beginning and end with nothing in between. So if it's not blank, that means it's set, then we're going to go to the server variables and we're going to say HTTP host is equal to HTTP X original. Now I'm missing one step. You'll find out in a minute. Uh, I'm doing it on purpose just so we can see how to troubleshoot this. And so we've set this back again and we're going to say none for no action because the action takes place in here. So we'll apply this. Now let's go and run this test again. So execute. Oh, we got a 500 error. Why is this? So let's scroll down. It says the server variable HTTP host is not allowed to be set. Add the variable, the server variable name to the allowed server variable list. Okay. So we want to make sure that site owners do not change variables like this unless we grant them permission. So we trust it in this case and we're going to grant permission. So we need to go up to the global level, URL rewrite, into here. View server variables and we're going to say HTTP host is an approved variable. So we'll try this again and now you can see we have a nice 200 status code. Welcome to Contoso. Okay, so that's our first trick. Now we want to look at a second trick and actually which will allow us to not have to use this particular URL rewrite rule. So let's delete that and we're going to add it back again to the global level. Now in this situation where we have three servers, we may want to, again, keep it as generic as possible. So this next trick I'm showing you comes in handy here. And what we want to do is we want to make sure if the request comes in two times, we never catch the second time through, only the first time. So here's what we want to do, is we're going to go up to the server level, actually, and so a second thing we can do as an added benefit is we don't need this ARR base always. Let's delete it. And instead, on Contosa.com, let's change our bindings to catch everything. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use Contosa.com to catch it the first time through. It's going to take that request. It's going to throw it out of the server via here. 
to one or more servers. It's going to come back again, rebind to Contoso.com, and this way we can leverage round robin and everything else. So the first request can come through, which is just very basic, very simple. It's only load balancing. Then it comes through and does the complex stuff here. And we can leverage the round robin, we can have statistics, we can have everything else that we're benefited from from the load balancer. And so what we want to do now is the way to do this is with the URL rewrite rule, we're going to do something here with the headers and it's simply this. Let's add a new header and again we don't need those top two rules depending on what you're doing with IP addresses, right? So this next principle doesn't depend on whether or not you use the previous trick, but I'll leave that in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to say HTTP and we can make up a new one and let's call this ARR completed phase. You can call it whatever you want, but we're going to say now we've completed phase one or pass one, whatever you want to call it. So HTTP, let's drop that into our clipboard. And now what we do is up here in the conditions, we're going to say if completed phase does not match one, then we're going to let it through. So see what we've done is we've now added a header which says we've used this rule and here it says only use it if we hadn't used the header. This prevents a loop in the usage of this rule. So now we hit apply and if this works correctly what's going to happen is it's going to come through catch on the rule, send it back out again and come back through to the exact same site but not catch the second time through. This allows us to leverage the advantages of ARR but potentially reuse the same server. And so if this all works right, execute, look at that. 200 status code, welcome to Contoso. Okay. So hopefully that made sense, and if your situation warrants it, it's going to make even more sense, as you're going to say, what are these tricks that I can use to loop back again to the same server? And I've hopefully given you two tricks to add to your arsenal that you're able to use. So again, to recap briefly, the first one is to change the host on the way through, and we can add that back again. And the second one is to use this here to prevent a loop. We can add any kind of header variable here and to make sure that, that same rule only gets used once. And also if we wanted at this point we could go ahead and add another rule here at the global level to add the HTTP host back. In fact let's do it briefly. So what we're going to do is we're going to say put, put HTTP host back and we're going to say if the pattern is anything but the condition now is going to be if completed phase does match the pattern of one. We're only going to do this the second time around. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put the binding back again. So HTTP host is going to be whatever HTTP X original HTTP host was. And we're going to put that back again. And for actions we're going to say none. Okay. So what we do is we, we don't have a clash. And just to confirm this works, we execute. We have a 200 status. And if we wanted to spend another two minutes, we could actually set it up where we can confirm that that was added back. You're just going to have to take my word for it that this did add that all back again for us. Hope you found this useful. It is a very specific one-off. And uh, we have more coming. Next week I want to talk about load balancing ARR itself. How do we make sure that ARR isn't a single point of failure? Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you again next week.